What's up everybody? So, uh, good news, bad news. The other day, as you saw in one of my videos, Billy and Robbie uh, hooked up the boost controller in my Nova. Obviously, if you're not familiar with what a boost controller does, it's intended to control boost. The boost controller adds CO2 pressure, air pressure, to the wastegate to hold the wastegate closed so that the engine will make more boost than just what the wastegate spring will allow. And the idea is for it to limit the amount of boost and control the amount of boost that we add to it so that we don't hurt the engine. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, it did not control the boost whatsoever. Billy went out and made a test hit and he said it white smoked the tires from 40 miles an hour in high gear. And I was like, I can't hardly believe that. So I had to go see for myself. So he made some adjustments to the boost controller to turn the boost down, uh, but that did not happen. It made 30 pounds of boost in about two seconds. It was probably more like 40. The boost pressure opened a crack in a cylinder wall, filling that cylinder with water and sending the connecting rod out through the side of the oil pan. So the good news is that Junior dialed up summitracing.com and ordered a long block. Just something we can put in the car so that it moves itself around, we can drive it and cruise it and enjoy it, and uh, hopefully get a control on uh, the boost controller. According to the tracking information supplied by Summit Racing, this new engine is due to be delivered this afternoon. So first thing Thursday morning, Billy and I got started pulling the old engine out and getting ready to unload this new engine off the semi-trailer when it rolls up out front. Now the engine that we just pulled out of the Nova was a 30 over 350, so 355 cubic inch, flat top pistons, but it had a really nice set of Brodix Track 1 heads and a pretty decent hydraulic roller. This engine, however, is a much more mild 383 cubic inch small block with a much smaller cam and a lot less compression. It does, however, have a brand new scat crank, brand new forged connecting rods, and hyper eutectic pistons. The block itself is a four bolt main factory hydraulic roller with a one piece remain seal. We intend to set this engine straight down in the car with no modifications except for a melling billet oil pump and a seven quart pan. However, I didn't have a pan gasket for the late model block, so Uncle Bucko went down to see Mark at A1 to pick one up. What's that on your face? When Jeremy showed up down at Mark's, he had a little scratch on his face. You ever heard that song, Dumb Ways to Die? Well, here's one. You may remember in my last video, Jeremy complaining about this cutoff wheel. Well, Jeremy was the one that fell victim to it, and when Mark saw him, he realized some safety gear was needed. I got something for you. What's that? Well, Give him the camera and you take your hat off. Well, first I want to see what you're trying no, to stick I'm in not, my head. No, you got to close your eyes, play nice. I don't like playing nice. Yes, you're going to play nice right now. Give him your camera. Don't make me I'll beat be you. Back. Close your eyes, take your hat off. I'll be back. I'm going to take your glasses off too. For what? you would be fine. I'd say this is proof positive that Mark definitely cares about his best customers. What do you think of that? The Uncle Bucko Wizard Wheel Safety Helmet. Made just for you. Look at that. It's got a tag in the back. You got a little air hole back there. I can't see out of this thing. Who made this? What we do here is we solve problems. You have to wear them when we ride. Oh, well, shit fire. That's what we do all day long. And I saw you had a problem. Anybody bring any extra bags? No, nobody brought an extra bag. So I'm here to fix it. I have a whole list of problems. I can't hear you. What'd you say? All I can hear is criticize, criticize, criticize. Your thing's falling out. From now on, don't ask me your mind for nothing. Anyway, that, that's look. You got protection from the from the shoulders up. Game on. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this little project with the Nova is kind of setting me back a little bit. I had intended to get the 55's engine put back in it right away, but now we've got to deal with this. Once we had the new oil pan on, it was time to get ready to put the intake manifold on and then get it set down in the Nova. While Jeremy was working on the engine, Kenny went ahead and unboxed the new bucket seats for my Nova and got busy putting those in the car. These are going to be much more comfortable than the plastic seats I've been sitting on for the last 30 years. Anyway, we were finishing up putting the bucket seats in and we were just about ready to set the engine down in the car when Vicki rolled in with lunch for everybody. She typically has Friday afternoons off and she usually brings back lunch from a barbecue place or Cane's, but today she brought back some extra goodies. What do you got there, Squirrely? I 
had a little side detour. No kidding. <laughs> Looky there. What? Lemon Crunch. That one has your name all over it. Mm. About the time me, Kenny, and Jeremy were digging into Kane's lunch, Billy showed up to help us start putting the engine down in the car. Now this one piece rear main seal crankshaft requires an externally balanced flex plate. So Billy helped the guys go ahead and get that put on and then it was finally time to set this thing down in the car. Now one nice thing about having turbo headers, you can set the engine down in the car with the starter already on it. It only took us about 15 minutes to get the engine bolted up to the bell housing and set down on the motor mounts. Then it was time to bolt the carburetor on, set the distributor cap on, run the plug wires, and then finally put the headers on and install the turbos. Pretty much everything after the headers connects with V-band clamps, which makes it really easy to put everything together and clock everything where it needs to be. Once the turbos and the wastegates were installed, it was time to install the cold side and the carburetor hat. Then Billy and Kenny tackled the converter bolts and putting the exhaust system up underneath the car and putting water in the radio. If all goes well, we may be driving this car later tonight. All right, here we go. Let's see here, get a little fuel. Button down these comfy seats. Turn the pump on, let's check for leaks. You got any fuel pressure? You see any leaks, Kenny? After a quick check for leaks, it was finally time to hit the key and see if it'll start. All right, go ahead. Initially, the valve train was extremely noisy and the starter was rubbing the flex plate. Starter's rubbing the flywheel. The valves need adjusted. How's the oil pressure? Responsive, it's just the valves need adjusted really bad. Yeah, the valves need adjusted, it'll start sounding better. Plus, I don't even know if this has been run on the dyno or run at all. So it may no, be it's never been run. Bit. Is it staying cool? Yeah, it's staying cool. It's gonna be a nice little street motor. It took a few minutes for the hydraulic lifters to pump up, but once they did, everything sounded good except for one rocker arm. So I got out my stethoscope to check things out. Outside of that one noisy rocker arm and the fact that the starter just barely touches the flex plate, the only thing I needed to do was adjust the carburetor and set the idle speed. Pump. Total pump. Now come on. That little boost will be okay. There's one thing about turbos, they can sound like total crap and still make good power. goes from it punk makes... to I'm ready. <laughs> he said it was a pump, but it that tells a... me it's making more power. Oh. Because it's loosened the converter up. Oh boy. So it's at least making more power down low. Well, this is a 383 where the other one was a 355. This has got a 375 stroke, come on. It's got some torque, dog. <laughs> So first thing Saturday, Billy and I got the valves adjusted and got the hood put on the car. Yeah, that sounds a hell of a lot better than what it did last night. You just barely hear the camshaft in it. You can tell it's a low compression, real small camshaft, little tiny cylinder heads, but it's a nice little street motor. I'm gonna take it up the road and see what it does. 
I set the initial ignition timing at 36 degrees, bolted that new ATM carburetor on it, and drove it straight to the fuel station to top off the fuel tank. Really, the car is comfortable with the new bucket seats and it really doesn't run too bad. Runs nice and cool, oil pressure is good, and honestly seems to make really good power, although it hasn't been tuned yet. Anyway, after a quick test drive and run down to the fuel station, I come back to the shop and it's time to hop on the next project. Billy's small block Chevy for the S10 is back and it's ready to go in the truck. By the time I got back from my test drive in the Nova, Kenny had all the parts for the S10 laid out, but we quickly realized we were missing a flex plate. So I jumped in the truck and headed towards Jeg's to go visit Miss Kimmy and pick up everything we need to put the engine back in the S10. We had just got the engine set back down in the truck when everybody showed up from House of Pearls. Nikki, Paul, and Jesse came down to check out all the cars that were looking at maybe having them paint. My Nova is probably going to be the first one, and Billy's Nova maybe even a close second. The Falcon definitely needs paint, but the one in the garage is the one I was worried about the most, Mom and Dad's old 55. It sounds like we're likely going to pull the body off the frame and start completely over. So this brings us to Sunday morning, and Billy's almost ready to fire his S10, but he's got a little work to do on the injection system first. We're taking these apart because they've been sitting for a couple months now, and uh, they're rebuildable, so I've got these aluminum vice jaws in here. I'm trying my best not to scratch up the body of the injector, but it's kind of inevitable. Um, just loosen this up. There is what is called the pencil. Which is the bottom part of the injector. These actually look pretty clean so far. So we've got this. Sits on top of here with that spring. Not really much to it. Got an O-ring sitting down in there. So that's really all there is to it as far as cleaning them and rebuilding them. Just make sure there's no buildup in there. Make sure there's no buildup in here that the pencil can get stuck on. That thing that goes up and down. Um, make sure your spring's good. And uh, make sure your O-ring's good in there so you don't have any leaks. So first thing we've had to replace, a small tear in this top O-ring right there. Go ahead and replace that O-ring since I've got some new ones. Not that big of a deal. As Billy's finishing up, cleaning up his fuel injectors and putting them back together, Vicky was busy over in the merchandise shop, folding shirts, and getting things organized for Monday morning. Once Billy finished up putting all his injectors back in the truck, it was finally time to fire it up for the first time. For the first time since the truck has been put on fuel injection, the truck fired right up and sat there and idled, like it had just been shut off a few minutes ago. Once we had Billy's truck fired up and put a couple heat cycles to it, our attention turned to dinner. Not only what's for dinner, but what we're taking to dinner. For the last two or three weeks, all I've wanted to do was take Vicky out to dinner in the Malibu. And it looks like tonight's the night, but the car is pretty dirty, and I don't really have time to wash it by hand out in the yard. So, June Pup and I take it to the local car wash and run it through. Now, of course, once the car gets repainted up at House of Pearls, I won't be able to do this anymore. So I'm gonna take advantage of this while I can. After me and June Pup got done at the car wash, we stopped back at the house, picked up Billy and Vicky, and we headed towards town. This time, it was Vicky's turn to choose where we go to eat. And believe it or not, on Sunday night, she didn't choose Cracker Barrel. So anyway, that pretty much wraps up the weekend. And then Monday morning, I jumped in the Malibu to go run some errands. After a quick trip this morning to the bank, I head north out of Granville to go see Uncle Bob at the machine shop so I can check in on him and how he's doing on Jimmy Dale's small block. And I wanna get squared up with him and pay off my tab at the machine shop. It's about a 45 minute drive one way from our house up to Bob's. And I figured that's a pretty good way to break the engine in in the Malibu. By the time I got up to the machine shop, Bob had quite a bit of work done already. 
he's had a tri-power Pontiac engine up there in the machine shop for quite a while, and it looks like he's just about got it wrapped up, along with Jimmy Dale's engine and a customer's 434 that he's been dynoing over the weekend. After I got done up at Bob's, I headed back towards home and stopped by House of Pearls on my way back. Jesse was working on the hood on that 46 Suburban. Paul had been busy back in the paint booth all morning, and Nikki was staying plenty busy cutting and buffing on that 55 Chevy truck. I can't wait to see how things turn out on my Nova and Mom and Dad's 55 Chevy. Well, what'd you think of our conglomerate of cars down there? I love all of your cars. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. The Malibu is awesome. The Nova is awesome. They're all really cool. So, so I was talking to Paul and he thinks maybe he can work me in in a few months. Yep. Get the Nova in here. Yep. I'm going to work our schedule around and get you in here. We worked out some details on the plans for our cars and then back at the shop. Well, how's a honky supposed to work in these conditions? You need to pay your electric bill, William. The power company came out today to set a new transformer and finish up setting some new poles for the service for the new shop that's going out back. So while the power's off, Jeremy decided to bolts, go shopping. Bolts, bolts. Uh, here we are. Let's put the stuff together without bolts. I was hoping by the time I got home, the engine would be down in the 55. What are you doing? Putting your Legos on. That's not my Legos. Uh, whoever's Legos. My Legos is back there behind Rob. You know, the 400 you were supposed to put that 55 Chevy today? I thought you said you had the clutch all figured out. All I gotta do is put it on. Then I go put it on and it's a 10 inch, not a 12, when you got a 12 flywheel. All right, so is the clutch here now? Yeah. Then why aren't you working on it? I'm trying to make sure this doesn't get screwed up. Who would screw it up? It's getting deeper. Yeah, they're trying to set me up. They're like, give the cutter to Bucko. It looks like ass will blame him. Somehow Jeremy put himself in charge of helping Rob and Kenny put a hood on Billy's Nova today. But I got him back on track, got him back on the 55, and I told him we're not leaving the shop tonight until that 400 small block is finally sitting down on the 55 Chevy on its engine mounts with the four speed engaging the clutch disc. Once the hood was finished on Billy's Nova, we all tag team putting the engine back in the 55 Chevy. It's honestly a pretty tight fit, even though the engine bay looks pretty big. Once we got the engine setting down on the motor mounts and all the bell housing bolts in, we began test fitting the new radiator, which is evidently gonna have to sit in front of the core support like the six cylinder cars did. Well, Buckwheat, what's on the agenda for tomorrow? Uh, your aftermarket parts. Robble, 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 robble. It was about eight o'clock by the time we were done with the 55 and we shoved Billy's Nova back inside for the night. All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. So obviously we've been busy the last <laughs> several days and of course over the weekend, but the 55 has an engine in it, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, the Nova has a hood on it, believe it or not. The S10's back together, the Malibu's back together. The Dart's back together. Like, almost everything we own has a fresh engine in it. I can't hardly believe it. It's the first time in forever. Even my Nova has a fresh engine in it. <laughs> yeah. So, that was uh, unexpected, to say the least. Well, not really unexpected. I mean, it is street racing channel and old man's garage. We're definitely gonna blow shit up. So it seems like it happens more often than not here lately. But uh, that was uh, a bit of an accident. <laughs> so hopefully uh, we can uh, not repeat that scenario again. I'll be looking into the boost controller and the wiring and everything and make sure it's correct before I turn the boost controller back on with this new engine in it. Uh, this weekend, we are headed back to Brown County Dragway in Indiana for Gangster's Paradise. It's similar to the event that they have there called War in the Woods, which we were just at just a few weeks ago. Uh, a little bit different in that it's all small tire and it's all invitation only. So we'll be over there this weekend. There's racing Friday and Saturday. Sorry, Miss Vicky's already in bed. She usually does the details. She's not out here, but I'll try and get another video up by Wednesday at the latest so that we can cover all the details and show you guys what we're up to. And I plan on maybe doing a little testing this week 
with the Malibu. I think Allison's planning on testing the Dart, and I think Billy's planning on testing his Must or uh, not Mustang, his Nova this week. So we got a we got a bunch of stuff to get done yet this week before we leave for Brown County. I'm really excited about it. I'm really hoping to hear this 55 run. I looked up the cam specs on this camshaft we put in it, and I think it's going to sound pretty good. It's an Isky hydraulic roller. I'll go over all that uh, in the next video, hopefully when we hear this thing run. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.